What is up everyone? Welcome to 5 things we learn from game week 6. My name is Ryan and welcome to the football chat box. If you are new, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button and let me know in the comments one thing you learned from game week 6. Having said all of that, let's get into the video. The end is near. Alright, I don't mean about Trent and Robertson as their end is near, but the template end is actually near. Because it seems most, more and more as every week passes where like three strikers is going to be the norm. It seems that's what's going to happen very soon. Um, the bigger the back is slowly falling. I'm expecting a lot of managers to start switching to a 3-4-3 kind of formation or even... Um, at times, a 4-3-3 formation. That's also a possibility. Um, but what is clear is that three strikers are going to provide value. Um, and the bigger the back, in terms of double City defence, double Chelsea defence, double Liverpool defence, is probably not going to be beneficial, especially with Champions League coming up. Um, especially if you have a goalkeeper like... Allison and Edison and then you have one defender from your city then it's fine because your rotation chances of the keepers are very low but if you have two defenders like Walker who is apparently now potentially injured uh, along with Cancelo or if you have Cucurella and James or if you have Trent and Robertson who both couldn't make 60 minutes um, then you are you might want to reconsider and maybe just have one of them so that's number one let me know what you think about that I think Big at the back is kind of, it's the first cracks of the glass were done probably a bit before game week six, but now it's like even more, you can see it cracking and it's about to shatter. So let me know what you think about it in the comments. That's number one. Let's get into number two. Knee jerking won't help. Now, looking at the transfers out page, in terms of defense, obviously Perisic been sold in Mars, I can understand because tough fixtures, but Trent in number two, Kukurela, number three. Walker, I guess it's flagged. That's why. Zinchenko, okay. Arsenal fixture stuff. But like Trent and Kukurela, I, I don't know why people are selling immediately. Unless you have James, it's fine for Kukurela. But then in midfield, you got Salah as the second most sold player. In, in forward, you got Gabriel Jesus, who to be honest, I thought played really well against United. Um, and he's been sold really fast when he is about to be playing um, Everton and Brentford. Now, both of those teams can be got at. I still think Arsenal is a good team. So I don't understand why people are selling immediately. If you're trying to get the likes of Tony and Mitrovic for Gabriel Jesus, I think you can still wait one more week before you get rid of Gabriel Jesus at least. Um, give them the home game maybe at least. And maybe if you wanted to get out of those two strikers, you wanted to get one, okay, you can go and get one and play a three-striker formation. If Hesus, you can probably drop in seven or eight. Uh, or even after eight, when you wildcard, maybe in game time, that's a possibility. But I would recommend not to knee-jerk immediately. Also, because this is where we now have European fixtures starting. We have European fixtures starting this week. Be patient with... Um, in terms of price changes and everything, try your best to avoid looking at price changes websites uh, because we need to know a bit more information. Things can happen in Europe. Injuries could happen, which could mean that you might have a player who in gets injured and then you have to take him out for a hit because you've already used your free transfer. So make sure to be a bit more patient. Don't knee jerk. <laughs> information is key in this game. So the more information you have, the better decisions you can make. Keep that in mind. Having said that, let's move in to number three. Can I have more than three strikers, please? Now, last season, it looked like we didn't even want strikers. I, me, personally, if I could have played a 5-4-0 formation, I would have done it. If that was possible, a 5-4-0 formation, I would have done it last season. This season, I'm like, if I can't play more than three strikers, I would do it. Because we've got the likes of Tony, we've got the likes of Mitrovic, maybe potentially Isaac as well as another option. We've got Aubameyang who is yet to come. Um, there's rumours now about Diego Costa for Wolves, although Wolves' fixtures might be a bit more tricky. 
Um, there is Isaac from Newcastle. So there are quite a few players who, in terms of the forward line, could be very interesting options going forward. Um, and we're like, we need these players. Like, Mitrovic has kind of proved that he's now almost like fixture-proof. He's scoring against the t- tough teams as well. And I won't be surprised if he scores against Chelsea as well. Um, Tony, hat-trick, really good. But keep in mind, that was Leeds just bad defending from Leeds. This is comical defending from Leeds, to be honest. Uh, but it's not going to happen always. Leeds also, I think there was a one-off game from Leeds as well. They've been looking pretty good this season. But it's not going to happen always where Tony's going to get you a hat-trick. The, the upcoming fixtures are slightly tricky. It's not the easiest, but it's not hard as well. But it's a, bit, it's a very interesting set of fixtures, the upcoming fixtures. So... If you have Tony, great, great haul. I think he's a good player to get. Uh, but don't be sacrificing a Jesus maybe or even a Haaland yet to try and get him. At least that's what I'm thinking. Um, unless you're wildcarding and you want to take a risk, then fine, go ahead. Uh, I'm not putting you against it, but just be careful. Um, oh, at least wait till European games are done for this week before doing it. Um, so that's number three. So far, let me know what you've thought about it. If you've reached up to this point, make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get to 500 subscribers before game week nine, before the international break um, kicks in. So let's see if we can do it. Probably with your help, maybe we might be able to do it. So make sure to hit the subscribe button. Let's go into number four. Confidence in United grows. Now, Manchester United are looking better and Better and better as each game goes, but obviously there are still a few flaws. The game against Arsenal was good, but there was a time for about 20-odd minutes where I thought United lacked control in the midfield and then Arsenal goal came. It was definitely coming. It was on the cards. Um, The way the second half started and United didn't have control of the midfield, it was coming. But even then, after that, they still managed to... I saw what I what I saw was very interesting. They were low blocking, like they were defending in deep, defending together, um, and they are trying to pull, like they are focusing on their defense as well, trying to get clean sheets, which is good from an FPL perspective because Dalot I think could be a really good option for def- um, for a four point five defender if you wanted one, but also the attack is slightly and slightly improving. It didn't look great a couple games before, even though we were winning a few games, but it's getting better. And I just think it's going to keep on getting better. So Rashford still good value, 6.5, pretty good option. Anthony could be a very interesting pick. He might be a very frustrating pick as well, but he looks like he'll create chaos in the final third. And I am very excited to see what he does for FPL. He got his goal, obviously. 7.5 is still a pretty good price. I think he could also be another interesting pick, although I might just wait one more game before Anthony just to see if he plays in Europe and also whether he plays in Crystal Palace see how many minutes he gets before moving on to him but Rashford I think <coughs> at the moment is a good pick until Martial comes back now when Martial comes back then we kind of have to see what happens because we've got Sancho you got Rashford you got Anthony you have Ronaldo as well then you probably have to see I don't know what's going to happen with rotation and everything but at least for the next two games, I think Rashford is a very decent punt to have um, and could work out well, especially against Crystal Palace and Leeds. Both defensively, in the last couple of games haven't looked great, and I think it's worth a punt if you wanted to. Having said that, let's move in to number five. Game week seven captaincy will be tough. Now, why do I say this? Now, I was pretty confident with Haaland captaincy for game week six because he was playing Aston Villa against, uh, it was basically a weak defense. Um, and I was c- completely fine with him getting 60 minutes and giving him the armband. Same thing against Forrest. For those who watched my deadline streams, you would know why I was very confident in Haaland. Um, but this coming game week, it's going to be a bit more harder. Now, would I? Would that mean that I don't put the armband on Haaland? I don't know. We'll have to see. But the thing is, this game week, the reason it's going to be harder is because they're playing Spurs. Now, Spurs are defensively in the top three defences for XG considered um, XG considered non-penalty and XG considered both if you want to consider whichever category they're both third in the in the last six games right since the season has started they're third currently for XG considered so third best defence in the league right now which is why I think it's going to be a very tough game now 
we also need to monitor how many minutes Haaland gets in Europe. Because compared to 60 minutes against Aston Villa, 60 minutes against Spurs, I don't know. We'll have to see. The, I don't think he'll get 60 minutes against Spurs. I could see him getting 90 minutes as well against Spurs. Although that will depend completely on what the scoreline is. If, you, if City are 2-0 up or 3-0 up, uh, by the time it reaches 60 minutes, or even 2-0 up, I think, by the time it reaches 60 minutes, and if Haaland has played about 80 minutes or something in Europe, then I could see Pep take him in, taking him off. Then I'm not sure what the haul would be in that specific case. So I think it's going to have to depend on what happens in, in Europe. We also need to see Salah, how he does in Europe. He hasn't looked great. He had only one shot on target in the last game against Everton. He's clearly not, it's not performing, it's not working for him. He's playing a bit wide, but he does come centrally as well. But one shot on target, very low XG. It's, I don't know, it's not working for him. Wolves are not the easiest team as well. Wolves are also defensively pretty good. Uh, in terms of XG non-penalty, they are a bit, uh, what would I say? No, this is team attack I'm looking at. Sorry, in terms of XG non-penalty, they are currently... 4, 5, 6, 7th best defense. In terms of XGC considered, they are a bit more lower because they've considered a couple of penalties. Or maybe a penalty, I think. I'm not really sure. <laughs> but they're decent defense. They're not bad. They're not Bournemouth bad. They're not Nottingham Forest bad. Um, so we'll have to see. Captaincy so far, it's a bit tough. We'll need to see what happens. Um, Gabriel Jesus, I am not probably going to captain him because I just don't think... Well, I'm not too convinced by Gabriel Jesus' captaincy potential. Like, I feel like the Hall potential from a Salah or Haaland is much more bigger. So, you ideally, you want to captain the player you think he's going to get the most points. That's what my thoughts are. Let me know in the comments what you think. I think Game X7 captaincy is probably going to wait and see. It depends on what happens in Europe. And I'll have to watch the games and see and try and understand what's going to happen. But yeah, it's a tough decision. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you've come up to this point, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and let me know one thing you learned from Game Week 6. Having said all that, my name's Ryan from the Football Chat Box. So. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us. And